Shalom and welcome to Two Minutes of Torah. This is the ninth shear in this series on Shemitah and the fifth shear in uh, the discussion of Hetem Mechira. We discussed many, many issues that are involved in the Mechira, the pro and con. Uh, we last year discussed the whether if you're against Hetem Mechira, does the sale not go through? And we discussed the legal aspect, is it considered to be a legal sale or not? And we saw there's a machloket in the postkin. When you want to do a halachic sale, but it's not legally binding in terms of the country, is that a sale or not? So Chazoni says you need to have a tabu sale registered with the land authority. If not, it's not a legal sale. Then it's not a halachic sale. The Divrei Chaim Yisans held by Chametz over a century ago that if it's a halachic sale, if you know it's not legally binding according to the laws of the country, it would still be a sale. There's another serious issue that comes up: Gemirat Da'at. When the farmer sells his land, is he really selling the land? What does he have in mind? Is it a joke for him? So this, of course, is a serious halachic shayim of Bechametz as well. Uh, does the seller have gemira dot have in mind to sell? Does it matter if he has in mind to sell or not? So it's a very serious discussion in the post him. What exactly does his das have to be? Rav Moshe Feinstein, for example, by selling the chametz, had a case where a person sold the chametz, and then during Pesach he's taking uh, the chametz out and selling it to people. Now, it's not his chametz. What's he doing? So it's obvious that he looked at the sale as a joke. So does that mean that all the chametz in his store is chametz of Allah Pesach and all the noodles that uh, you're buying after Pesach? He didn't really sell. It was a joke for him or not. So that's the shayla that we have by Pesach and this shayla here as well. So the post can deal with the issue of a sale and he signs the documents. He does everything necessary to make it binding. But did he really have Gamira Dot? Did he have it in mind or not? And that's a shot of the post on what the nature of the mirror dot has to be in order for the sale to go through. Another important factor is that as the years go on and the lawyers are involved more and the, 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 the Lachir has more of a status, in 1979, the land authority actually said that it is a legal sale as well, even if it's not registered in Tabo. So as it becomes more serious and the farmers look over the document, and even have lawyers to analyze it. So maybe it's a possibility to say that it not only uh, do you need Gemira Da, but you have Gemira Da, you have in mind to sell. So that's, of course, another issue that needs to be analyzed as well. So just to summarize the Heta Mechira discussion, you have the question of whether it would help to sell the land of Israel or not. Uh, is it still the land of a guy, but it's in Israel, and therefore he cannot work the land? Chazoni says you cannot work the land of the guy, so it doesn't matter if you sell it or not. Then next question is, if you do hold like the postcard that you could work the land that belongs to a guy, so then how do you go out make it into the guy's land? If you already own the few hundred years, that's fine. But if you didn't only want to sell it, so now you have to deal with the issue of lotachanem, serious isidoraita. If you can overcome the halachic hurdle of lotachanem by saying that it's temporary, by saying that it's in order to further the Jews' possession of the land, and that's why it's not our servant. It's not going to give the guy further possession of land, whatever story you want to give. Uh, assuming you can avoid lo then you have to deal with the legal issue. Do you need to have a legally binding? And nowadays, is it legally binding? And then the final question is the gemira dot. Do you need to have gemira dot or not? Not. And do we have? Does a typical farmer have gemira dot? He has in mind. He's selling it. It's a proper sale. All these issues, of course, are involved in this most complicated and delicate issue of hetemachira. It goes without saying that the five-part series that we just had on Hetem Mechira is just to go ahead and give an overview of all the different positions, at least some of the positions, to give an insight into those who prohibit it, insight into those who permit it. And of course, of course, of course, one must talk with his posek, her posek, what he should do, what she should do, to align it, not to align it, to align it, to buy it, as opposed to buying from Arabs. Uh, the other question, of course, going to someone's house, and even if you don't lie in your house, can you lie in someone else's house? Do you actually look at this traif? All these shadows, of course, must be addressed to one's post sake. And Elo Elo, Divrei Elohim Chayim Shalom.